Hello students. Today I am continuing with the chapter electricity of class 10 physics. And today we are going to discuss the topic, next topic, resistors in parallel. In the previous class we have discussed that resistors can be connected in two ways in an electric circuit, series and parallel. About the series combination we have seen in the previous class and we have also seen and derived a formula to get the equivalent resistance of three resistors R1, R2, R3 when connected in series. Once again I am reminding you the formula. We got Rs equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. In this way, if there are more resistors R4, R5 etc. Then the formula will continue Rs equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus dash dash dash. Now, today our topic is when resistors are connected in parallel, what will be its equivalent resistance or combined resistance? This is the way R1, R2, R3 are connected in parallel. All of you can see, they are connected between the same two endpoints A and B. An odd meter is connected here which measures the potential difference across R1, R2, R3. And an ammeter is there, which will give you the amount of electric current in the whole circuit. Two important points that you have to remember when resistors are connected in parallel are Number one, as you can see, all the three resistors are connected between the same two endpoints. They are connected between the same endpoints A and B. So, the potential difference across R1, R2 and R3 will be the same. Because R1, R2, R3, all the three are connected between the same endpoints. And potential difference across A and B will be same. Potential difference across the two points A and B of the circuit will be same. Since R1, R2, R3, all the three are connected between the same two endpoints A and B. PD across R1, PD across R2 and PD across R3 will be same. So point number one, potential difference PD or V remains same. across R1, R2 and R3. Reason, they are connected between the same two endpoints and between two points of a circuit, the potential difference will be same. So, if V remains same, then what will change? I changes. Now, electric current will change where along R1, Along R2 and along R3, the amount of electric current will change. Say, if I am taking along R1, suppose electric current I1 flows through R1 and I2 flows through R2 and I3 will flow through R3. So remember the two important points when resistors are connected in parallel, V remains same across all the resistors, but I splits. I splits along R1, R2 and R3. When I after reaching here, I will split because there are three separate circuit from A. Electric current after reaching here, there is till here there is only one path. For this potential difference V, there is only one path till here. From there it is getting diverted into three. This electric current will flow along three separate direction. So this same V in here it will be I. Now this I is getting split. 
it will get split into I1, I2 and I3. And again after reaching here, it will become I. So along this path, R1, R2, R3, I will split into I1, I2, I3. So we can say here I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now use Ohm's law. Using Ohm's law, I is equal to V upon R. V is equal to I R. Therefore, I is equal to V upon R. So, V upon R is equal to, now what is I1? I1 is equal to V upon R1. What is I2? V upon R2. And what is I3? V upon R3. I hope all of you understood this step. I is equal to V upon R. So, I1 is equal to V upon R1. Because, along I1, along this path, there is resistor R1. And V remains same for all the three. For all the three resistors, V is same. So, I have taken V everywhere same. In place of R, it will become R1, it will become R2, it will become R3. Now, what is common on both sides? V is common on both sides. Taking V common, it will become 1 upon R. Again, taking V common, it is 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. Taking V common on both sides. Now, this V and V can be cancelled. So, what is left? 1 upon R is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. This is the equivalent resistance formula when resistors are connected in parallel. So, we may also represent it as RP to distinguish equivalent resistance when parallel and series. So, remember the formula. We got the formula. 1 upon Rp is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. Now, if you look at this formula, you can see what happens to Rp when more and more R1 are connected in parallel. Those who are good in mathematics can see very, see, very easily that Rp in <coughs> decreases when R1, R2, R3 number of Rs are increasing and if they are connected in parallel the total resistance of the circuit or equivalent resistance of the circuit will decrease. Whereas in series what was the formula? It is the algebraic sum of all the resistors. Rs is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So, as we connect more and more arcs in series, the equivalent resistance of that circuit will go on increasing. In series, equivalent resistance go on increasing, but in parallel, equivalent resistance go on decreasing. So, this is also a very important <coughs> derivation. Hope that all of you understood. Please do it. Now, our next topic is Heating effect of electric current. Heating effect of electric current. What does it mean? Already I have discussed that whenever electricity flows through a circuit, a part of electricity is getting converted into some unusable form of energy and that unusable form of energy is mainly heat. Why? Due to resistance offered by the wire. When electricity flows through a wire, it will oppose its flow, which is called resistance. So, due to the resistance offered by the wire, when electricity flows through a wire for longer time, it will become heated up. All of you may have seen it, all of you may have felt it. When electricity flows through a wire for a longer period of time, and if you touch this wire, you can see that this wire become hot. Similarly, you might have seen 
when we use appliances of high power rating high power rating appliances after some time that cord wire will become hot it is because due to the resistance offered by the wire a part of electricity is getting converted into heat this is called heating effect of electric current now we are going to discuss the heating effect of electric current more in detail for that i am going to derive a formula how to find the heat generated when electricity is flowing through a wire or a circuit i am starting with the formula for potential difference we know that potential difference v is equal to w upon q amount of work done upon quantity of charge transfer cross multiplying work done w is equal to v into q now we have another formula power is equal to work done upon time taken plus 9 formula power is defined as the rate of doing work that is work done upon time taken now for this w and substituting this value w is equal to vq so this w become vq upon t in bracket you can write from equation number 1 above so we got p is equal to vq upon t vq upon t can be written as v into q upon t now what is q upon t if you remember you know q upon t is called i so what it will get p is equal to v into i this is a very important derivation very important formula in physics p is equal to v into i power is equal to potential difference v into electric current i now i am continuing to find out the heat generated heat developed by electric current so p is equal to vi now we from this formula from power formula you might be remembering one more in class 9 you were taught two formula for power power is the rate of work done or rate of consumption of energy in two ways power can be defined whenever we talk about power of an electric appliance for example power of a tube light is 40 watt in that case power is equal to energy consumed per unit time when we say the power of a tube light is 40 watt it means it is consuming 40 joule of electricity in one second time so power is equal to energy upon time taken is also an, a definition another formula for power so i am writing once again p is equal to e upon t cross multiply e is equal to p into t now what is p p is equal to vi so what did you get energy is equal to vit now heat is also a form of energy so in place of this e we can write h heat generated by electricity h is equal to vit another formula for heat produced by electric current so please see the derivations power is equal to energy upon time taken so energy is equal to power into time now power p is equal to vi so it become vit now energy means it can be any form of energy it can be heat energy also so we got h is equal to vit heat generated by electric current is equal to vit one formula now i am going to change this formula once again using ohm's law i am going to change this v what is ohm's law v is equal to ir so in place of this v i am going to write ir so it become ir into it is equal to i square rt
This is a very very important formula. H is equal to I square RT. This is known as Joule's law of heating. Repeat, H is equal to I square RT is known as Joule's law of heating. So what is Joule's law of heating? The heat produced by electric current is directly proportional to square of electric current also directly proportional to resistance offered by the conductor and also directly proportional to time for which the electric current is flowing. So, H depends upon three factors I, R and T. Electric current, resistance of it and time. And H is directly proportional to all the three. That means, if any one of the three increases, H will also increase. We know that among these three, the most affected factor is I because it is I square RT. So, when I become double, H will become 4 times because 2i the whole square 4. If i become triple then H will become 9 times. So all i, r and t are responsible for H but the most responsible factor is i. So H is equal to i square rt is known as Joule's law of heating. So Joule's law of heating states that the heat produced by an electric current is directly proportional to square of the electric current flowing through it. It, it also directly proportional to resistance of the conducting wire and it also directly proportional to time for which electricity is flowing. So, H is directly proportional to these three factors I, R and T. But I is the most affected point because in the formula you can see it is I square. So all of you remember, it is all about heating effect of electric current. Remember the three important formulas, P is equal to VI, H is equal to VIT and Joule's law of heating, H is equal to I square RT. Our next topic is, practical applications of heating effect of electric current. What are the practical applications of this heating effect? Is this heat produced by the passage of electricity is desirable or undesirable? The answer is both. At some places, heat produced by the passage of electric current is desirable. Where in electric heating devices, there are many electric devices where the heat is deliberately produced. Can you name some of them? An electric ion. It uses the heat produced by the electricity. A toaster. An electric oven. An electric geyser. Heaters. Immersion rods. These are such electrical appliances where Heat is deliberately produced. Heat is the working substance there. These devices are called electric heating devices. So in these appliances, the production of heat is desirable. But at many other places, this heating effect is undesirable. You might have heard lot of news. In most of the cases of fire, the reason is short circuit. How does short circuit occur? This is the topic in the coming chapter. But I may tell you a little. A short circuit occurs due to the extra heat produced when electricity flows through a wire continuously. As I told you just now, when electricity flows through a wire, it becomes heated up. So after a long time, due to that extra heat produced, this plastic covering can get melt. When this insulation get melts, 
Then the two wires, you can see that in wiring you might have seen all the wires are <coughs> going parallel to one another. If this plastic covering or insulation of the wire got melted away completely due to the heat produced, then the two wires, two adjacent wires will come in contact with each other which produces a spark which is called a short circuit. Now due to that spark, that spark can be converted into a fire. Most of the building fire is due to short circuit and the reason for short circuit is heating effect of electric current, this insulation get melts away. So at some places or at such places heat is not desired or undesirable. Another application of heating effect of electric current is usage of fuse. I hope all of you might have seen a fuse like this. This is a safety measure in our homes and everywhere. How does it work? You can see a wire, a fuse wire is tied between the two terminals. You can see a fuse wire is tied between the two terminals. And this fuse is inserted into fuse socket. And how does it work? This wire, fuse wire is not copper. It is an alloy of lead and tin and its melting point is very low, much lower than that of an ordinary copper wire. So how does it work? Suppose there is a high voltage in the electric circuit. Due to some fault, there is high voltage in the electric circuit. Now, what will happen when high voltage is reached into electrical appliances? It can spoil that electrical appliance. Because for every appliance, a particular voltage is needed. In India, for domestic purpose, the voltage is fixed and it is 220 volt. 220 volt. For any reason, if this voltage is much more than 220, then all these electrical appliances will get spoiled. It will burn away. So a safety fuse is used to save such electrical appliances. And how does it work? As I told you, this fuse wire has very low melting point. So when there is 220 volt in the supply line, the heat produced by 220 volt is <coughs> less than the melting point of our fuse wire. Suppose by mistake, sometimes the voltage in the line goes higher than 220. When it goes higher than 220, much more than 220, then it will produce, that we will produce more heat in the circuit. When more heat is produced in the circuit, this fuse wire get melted away. When this fuse wire get melted away, the circuit will be broken. When the circuit gets broken, no electricity will flow in that circuit and our appliance will be saved. So, safety fuse wire also works on the principle of heating effect of electric current. Because when there is desired voltage, there will be a particular amount of heat produced. When the voltage goes higher, heat will also become higher. When heat becomes higher, this fuse wire will get melted away because it has low melting point and it will break down the circuit and that appliance will be get saved. Now one more point at the end. If you go to a shop to buy the fuse, then the shopkeeper will ask you of how many ampere fuse is needed. Because fuse is available in amperes. 1 ampere, 2 ampere, 3 ampere, 4 ampere. So you should know how many ampere fuse is required for your use. Nowadays these things are replaced. Nowadays you cannot see this type of fuse, but nowadays we have a concealed fuse wire. You might have seen fuse is now concealed in a glass bulb. It is not open like this. It is old fuses. In old days we were using this type of fuse and you might have seen the bigger size also. But nowadays in the appliances there is a concealed fuse. There also working system is same. The same wire is there, but it is kept in a glass bulb. 
and if once it is melted away it cannot be replaced but it can be replaced when once it is melted away we can bring another fuse wire and tie it like this it is ready to work again so i was talking you about the ampere of fuse for each appliance the fuse that is needed will have a particular ampere how to calculate it we know we have seen the formula p is equal to vi just now we have seen p is equal to vi what is p power power of the appliance v in india is fixed to 20 volt i means electrical now the fuse is available in ampere and we know that ampere is the si unit of i so each appliance uses different i an ac your refrigerator and a fan your tv all these appliances are having different p different power you may have seen the power is also mentioned on each of this so as p changes and v is fixed to 20 volt i also changes for different appliances the so amount of electric current consumed by an ac will be different from that of refrigerator will be different from that of your tv so i is equal to p upon v i is equal to p upon v this is the formula that you have to use to find out how many ampere fuse is needed for your appliance for example you are going to buy a fuse for your for your say any appliance having a power of 1000 watt 1000 watt or 1 kilowatt and we know that v in india is 220 so what is the answer almost <clears throat> 4 point something okay 4 point something see yes it is about 4.5 ampere but fuse is not available in decimals it is available in 4 ampere 5 ampere 6 ampere if you are getting 4.5 ampere you may require a 5 ampere fuse for it because 0.5 ampere is bearable by the appliance itself in this way you have to find the ampere of the fuse required by you what is the formula i is equal to p upon v v in india is fixed to 20 volt only thing that you require to know is its power and the power of each appliance is already mentioned you can see the power of each electric appliance is written for example on a tube light it is written 40 watt on an led bulb you can see it is of 6 watt or 5 watt or 9 watt similarly power of each appliance is already known to you so p divided by v power upon v volt volt is 220 you will get i that is electric current consumed by that appliance so we have to use a fuse of particular ampere that means whenever there is this metal wire this fuse wire is made accordingly for a 1 ampere 2 ampere 3 ampere the thickness of this wire will be different because it has to get melted whenever there is a sudden hike in the voltage or due to any reason if voltage is more in the circuit that can destroy the appliance so that high voltage will not be allowed to reach the appliance before that this fuse wire get melted away and the circuit will be broken so remember this formula also I is equal to P upon V formula to calculate the electric current I and by seeing this electric current you have to decide the ampere of the fuse that is required. So today we have seen 
resistance in parallel. Then we have studied heating effect of electric current. And now we have seen practical applications of heating effect of electric current. Please revise and go through this portion and study well. Till then, thank you.